Oh, thank you, Lord. T turn quickly with me to your Bibles, to the, to the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 26th chapter. I'm going to give you the title after we read these scriptures, but Matthew 26, starting at verse 30. I want you to stick with me on this if you can, theologians. St. Matthew 26, 26 chapters, beginning at verse 30. The scripture reads, And when they had sung a, sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Then said Jesus unto them all, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Verse 32, but after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto them, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Transfer over to verse 47 of the same chapter. And while he yet spake to Judas, one of the twelve came. And with them a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that shall same is he. Hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. Jesus said unto them, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. Verse 31, I'm sorry, verse 51. And behold, one of them which was with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then said Jesus, Put up again thy sword, thou, thy sword into, thy, into this place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot pray to my Father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? That's about 80,000 angels. <clears throat> and how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? In the same hour said Jesus to the multitude, Are you come out as against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple, and you laid no hands, no you laid no hold on me. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples, then all the disciples, then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Verse 57, And they that had laid hold unto Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. But Peter followed him afar off, I mean, from a distance, unto the high priest's palace, and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Verse 59, Now the priests, now the chief priests and elders, and all the 
counsel sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. Verse 62, And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answers thou nothing? What is it which these witnesses against thee? But Jesus held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I said and say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting in the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest sent, rent his clothes, saying he hath spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now you have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? The answer is said, he is guilty of death. Verse 67. Then said they, then did they spit in his face and buffeted him. And others smote him with the palms of their hands. They slapped him. Said, prophesy unto us, unto us, thou Christ. Who is he that smote ye? Verse 69, now Peter sat without in the palace. A damsel came unto him saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was gone out into the porch, because he left immediately, another maid saw him and said to them, that was there, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied him with an oath. I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him, they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech betrayeth thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, trying to change his tone of voice, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. Peter remembered the word of Jesus when he said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. The title, how many times have you been scattered or fled from the word of truth? How many times have you been scattered or fled from the word of truth? In, in reading this and looking at this from a different paradigm, the Lord ministered to me to show me about how just when the word is being challenged, of the word has an undertaking by which people of authority, so to speak, don't agree with it. If we're not strong in the Lord, we find ourselves running not to the word, from away from it. Peter spoke boldly, boldly, in verse 33. He said, he, said he was sure that he would not stand. He, 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 he will make sure he, he would die. I'm not going anywhere. And some of us, we say, that, oh, I'm trusting God. I believe in God. Oh, yeah, God. God, no matter what, I'm standing on the word. Peter spoke boldly until that word was challenged. Peter was so sure that he would not stand by the word. How many times, brothers and sisters, that God has spoken to you you read the scriptures over and over, and the word said one thing, 
But when the challenge comes, when the word was challenged in your life in that area, you smoked the word because of the, the, the fear that was in you and because of the abruption and how hard what was coming against you stood side the word and you made a choice to scatter yourself from that word. There have been many times when the scripture told us, when you've done all you can do, and this is by faith, to stand. But sometimes the challenges of life hit us so hard that we forget what the word told us to do. I wrote in a note that how many times, like Judas, have we been a betrayer of the word? Those, those verses in 47 through 56, they, they talk about how Jesus betrayed it. Uh, Judas betrayed Christ, but he betrayed him in a way that, that he wanted to show the world how good Jesus was. It wasn't just a betrayal. It was trying him stepping in and trying to intervene to prove something. The word, brothers and sisters, it proved itself. Don't betray the word to move a point. And many of us, when you walk away from what the word said, when the word tells you to stand and you flee, you just betrayed it. When God said, I'll supply all your needs, and you go out there trying to supply all your needs, you just betrayed it. When God said, I sent my word to heal and to deliver, and your faith is not in that area of deliverance, you just betrayed it. You see, there's more to this particular passage that we have to open our eyes to look. These men walk with Christ. These men ate with Christ. These men live with Christ. I'm talking about the anointed one. And yet it's still, he said, when this shepherd, and he believed Jesus is the shepherd, because if the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We understand that part. But the thing about what they did, when the shepherd was challenged by what they thought was a bigger authority who had more power than him, they scattered themselves. When the men came up there, and, and, and over in verse, verse 35, it says, Peter said to them, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee, like also said all the same, all the same, oh no, not me, no, I'm not going, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It came out that in verse 56, it says, But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophet might be filled, that all the disciples forsook him and fled. All of them ran. What were they running from? They, they saw the miracles. They saw the power. Even two of them heard the voice of God when they sat there and, and they were in a trance and, and they said, oh, we need to make a temple here, a monument. He said, no, this is my son. There came, a voice came from him. Who's God was? Hear ye him. How many times have you, God, spoken to you? Telling you to hear the word. Stand on the word. Don't flee from it. Just because the situation seems like it has a lot of power, if God is for you, who or what can be against you? Sometimes, brothers and sisters, I ask ourselves, and the scriptures even speaks about it, we honor him with our lips, but deep down in certain situations, in certain challenges, our heart, our actions, are far from it. We choose to make the decision for what's best we think for us based on what our flesh is telling us rather than standing on the word which knows what's best for us. Brothers and sisters, it, it's, a, it's a challenge sometimes with this flesh. But the Bible tells us to put this flesh under subjection to the word. These men who walk with Christ when the time comes to prove who they really were, were they real disciples? Did they really know and believe that Jesus was, was who he says he was? That when the army came, and Jesus even said, look, look, I'm fulfilling the scriptures. If I had to, I can call upon my father, and he said, I can, I can have 12 legions, which is about 80,000 angels come to my rescue. He said, but not so. I've got to fulfill this. I've got to fulfill this. Sometimes you've got to ask yourself, pure gold has to be tried by the fire. Are you fulfilling 
your vow, your loyalty to the word? Or are you, have you been scattered because of the situation, the challenges that has confronted you? It boils down to two things. Choose ye this day who you're going to serve. Because in the end, who you serve going to also serve you. I, I was reading on this thing here from, from the passage. When Jesus told the crowd, say, look, I was with you in the temples. I was not trying to hide. I did not try to do anything underhandedly. I spoke the words of truth. Yet it's still, you didn't, want, you didn't touch me then. You don't want to bother me now. You see, the word does not have to hide itself. The word is bold because it's backed by the Spirit of God. Sometimes we forget that God's word is God. And God watches. You hear me, brothers and sisters? He watches over his word to perform it. Not your words, his words to perform it. Sometimes when we think about things, it's not because God didn't provide, it's because we didn't exercise our faith. Jesus said every time and it came back to him, those who were healed, those who were delivered, he said, your faith, your faith has made you whole. Where's your faith? If you're not whole today, where's your faith? Where is your faith? Or are you still scattered? Are you still running about? Have you fled from the word rather than drawn back to the word? Jesus told him, draw near unto me than I unto you. You see, I had to look at this from a different perspective and, and look at it from a paraclitic perspective that either I'm walking with the word or not. They chose to abandon the word in the time of trouble. Zechariah 13th chapter around the 7th verse, it talks about the future, about how when the sword comes that the people will be scattered. Matter of fact, let me see if I still got that in my Bible. I can... Oh... We learn a lot about the new from dealing with the old. And, and, and things that are brought forth to us, they're there to help us to understand not only who we are, but whose we are. Let me see if I can find that. Well, maybe I was wrong about Zechariah. Let's see, was it, uh, was it the eight chapter? Let me see, was it the seven chapter? Let me look at this here. to bring that back up to you, but it speaks about this here. While I'm still looking for that, I also noted that in verse 58 of that same chapter, Peter, he followed at a distance. Now, they, they grabbed him and he followed at a distance. How many times that change things have happened to the word, and smack, then you begin to draw back further from the word rather than trying to get closer to it. He followed from a distance to see what was going to happen. Sometimes we find ourselves following the word from a distance. We find ourselves unknowing, separating ourselves from the word of truth because the word of truth is not moving as fast as we want it to move. Therefore, we start distancing ourselves from the word of truth and start putting in our plan B on how we're going to get out of this stuff we're in. That's not, that's not of God, brothers and sisters. That is not of God. You're either there trusting him or you're not. And the challenge is that you can't serve two masters. There's, there's a point that you have to bring this flesh under subjection to the word. The Bible says once you know the truth, the truth shall make you free. Uh, I, I, I looked at this and, and I, I just began to wonder and, and, and how many, uh, it talk about the witnesses that came. How, how many times you've had false witnesses come and you say, well, I'm just going to trust God. And the false witness came, oh, God don't need for you to do all that. No, God, God, God wants you to help yourself. God don't need for you all that. You either trust in God. Those are false witnesses. 
when God's word says something, God means what his word said. And God is always willing to back his word up. Those false witnesses that attack you because you're standing in the word, don't look, turn a deaf ear to them. Well, I, 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 I went and did this. I went and did that. I, I, I didn't allow, allow that. I didn't, and, and, and God bless me. No, you bless yourself. And when you bless yourself in the end, how long is that blessing going to last? God's one is eternal. God has power. The Bible said God has the power to make one rich and add no sorrow unto it. When we bless ourselves in one way, how do we know that sorrow's not going to back it up down the road? You see, it's just so much of this parable here. So much of this parable here. And, and I understand the fact that, that if we don't trust God, who are we trusting? Peter went so far when the lady said, you, you, you even talk like Jesus. He went to cursing. He went to changing his voice. You ever been around a group of people, they say, oh, there, there's a holy roller. Then they go to talking about you and so forth, and then you start to try to imitate them, try to shake off the Christianity, the faith, the anointing that's in your life that's being one of them. How many of y'all have scattered yourself to be like people who need to be drawn to the word and not push you away from the word? There's so much to this. There's so much to this. There's a part that I may have to pick up next week concerning the fear that we allow to come at us. But the question, I go back to the title now. How many times have you been scared or fled from the word of truth? Brothers and sisters, it's time for us to get our acts together. It's time for us to be the true worshipers of God, Christ and follow him in spirit and in truth. With that, I'm going to pray. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you again for your anointing, for your word, for your word that has uplifting power, for us standing as true disciples of your word, Father. Helping us, Father God, to believe you no matter what. Understand that we don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. That your report is the good report. Your word is the true word. That, Father, we don't need to flee or scatter ourselves because of what we think is mighty coming our way that's challenging the word. The word stands on its own. The Bible says in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. That's what we're standing on today. That's what we're going to speak on today, and that's what we're going to believe on today. For all those right now, Father, we repent for not standing on the word. We repent for not believing the word. We repent for allowing ourselves to be scattered from the word rather than being drawn closer to it. Help us in our unbelief. Help us to follow you no matter what. Let us turn blind eyes to those things that are coming our way. Deaf ears to things we hear. Let us stand on the word no matter what. We're trusting you and we believe in you and we count on these things done this day. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen.